Hello boys, my name is Kleyoshi and welcome back to my 100% walkthrough of Skyward Sword HD. Yes, I call it a walkthrough because I've technically already beaten the game recently. I think I know what to do, but it's still nice to complete this game. Skyward Sword obviously HD version for Nintendo Switch, not the Wii version. I should have probably mentioned that, but yes, this is the HD Switch version that came out only a few months ago. In the last episode, we hopped off in the Farron Woods, just uh, finished saving a bunch of guys for this Kikui Elder, whatever his name is. I'm not going to even <laughs> attempt to pronounce that. But anyways, he gave us a task to do a series of mixed things, and we got a slingshot, and hopefully that means we can actually go into the rest of the game now. From here, our path is clear, but first, as you saw there, I just went ahead and picked up that piece of heart. It's in kind of an obnoxious spot, but at the same time, it's also in a spot where you could easily see it, so I could easily pick that up. And we're gonna use the slingshot on this so that we can get further into the actual area. Now, I will be saving because if I do fail badly later in the aim, I want to make sure to save. Master, I highly suggest you save the progress of your quest before you set out of the Temple Deep in the Woods in pursuit of Zelda. Yes. I was thinking the same thing, Fi. I was thinking the same. It's good that Fi knows what I'm thinking. Alright. Okay, so, a little bit scary, whatever. I'm kind of just slowly jostling in the woods. Oh, there was somebody there. I wonder who that could be. Probably not someone we fought at least hundreds of times in Hyrule Warriors, but, eh, uh, whatever. The game does definitely feel a lot quicker than its show counterpart, that's for sure. Oh, we got a golden skull. That's even rarer, rarer than the other ones. Again, anytime I can get it, it makes things a lot better. Now this one, that's a B area. You normally don't want to mess with fees, but if you do this, you can pick up a hidden item. Well, actually two. We have woodman lion bills. Hunters often pause the to makes them the strongest of the insects. And then we got Hornet Law. They're a precious source of protein that comes to a decent hornet's hide. That material might be good for making something. Unfortunately, they also have a side effect of spawning bees, which if you don't go around the area, can just attack you really quickly. If you move to the right, though, and leave the zone, then you can just come back and they will not attack you at all. They also will attack you if you go near them. So with that in mind, we're just going to completely ignore that zone. So part of the reason why there were so many swords before was because of one specific reason. Uh... Everything in this game now apparently does one heart of damage, and unless it's a completely different thing, it'll not be easy. And we got some Deku Seeds. There's also another one of those Beals. Unfortunately, we can't actually, uh...
One thing I learned is you can uh, is you can even run across these. It's not something I usually do though. Hey yes, we take out a lot of the bacoons, mostly to get them out of our path and also for the skulls they drop. There's not a never good way to really do it otherwise. So now that we know where Hornet Love has gotten from, we probably won't actually collect it on screen for a while. I think my idea is to do a small video where I collect each thing at least once. Whew. Okay, uh, we're definitely getting better at doing that. Now there is a way to get that from down using the Bakulin if you do stuff just right. Like, just hit that, actually, with a scattered strike, but instead we get this little pattern, because, um, if we try and pass that guy, that's a Gorko guy, basically, Goron. That Goron will basically stop us from doing that. I do believe he's called Gorko, though. These little blades are kind of annoying, actually. Oh, he's actually bouncy a lot smarter than I thought. Sometimes they just kind of fall off for some reason. But, uh, it's because I don't remember going near soon. Okay, well, I made him fall. Okay, there we go. We can finally move fast. The problem is, if you do not stay still, then they won't get off of you. That's another small problem I have with this save, is that uh, a bouncy attack can get really annoying. Thankfully, you can reset all controls with your uh, Y button whenever you want, which helps out a lot. And it's fine. Now, I'm not too worried. As long as I don't take a lot of damage, I think I'll be fine. It's just kind of annoying. Jeez, that was an immediate attack. Sometimes they just dodge you, which is really annoying. The new enemies almost never dodge you. This one, they do. Uh, there's a face I know. Hey, bud. Alright. Now, if we talk to him, he, were, he would tell us about uh, the Sky's Cube, but if I just hit it, yeah, that happens. Oh, you see that? The cube just shot up into the sky. I think it reacted to that whirly beam thing you shot out of the sword. What do you think the cube shot off to anyway? This mystery just got a whole lot more mysterious. They say there are cubes like that one all over the island. Tell you what, flash as any cubes as you find. If you find more of them while away, you come see me. Little, little note, by the way, and the only reason why I even did this to begin with. If you, uh, don't talk to him, then he will say, oh, come here and tell uh, me so I can tell you about goddess cubes. Meaning, in order to even go on anywhere, you have to talk to him before you even move on. You can even just walk past him, and that will also trigger the same effect. Now, yes, you can trigger that Skyward Strike, that, that thing with a Skyward Strike from below, but it's quite a bit different than what you remember. I'm gonna wait to save until I actually get into the actual thing. Oh, time to reset this. It gets really awkward sometimes. Now, if you mash the button Y multiple times, you can much more easily get the center session for each of your items a lot. In fact, you'll probably have to do that regularly throughout the playthrough. At least they made it very easy to reset the controls, though. 
So our first actual dungeon. Now there are things we could do above the surface. I am not willing to do all of them. I want to get the playthrough done sort of quickly. So into the first dungeon we go. Skyview Temple. That's what this place is called. This is also where I'll defeat our first boss in here. Master, I have bad news. The aura of many creatures reverate throughout the area. As a result, I cannot isolate Zelzora. You will not be able to track her here. Situation, I suggest you look around to see where to move to next. Been saying, because we may end up assigned to this location at some point. So, if you call for five, there's lots of things you could do. If you select one, it'll do certain things. A jet tells you where the object is. 5% died at Zelda currently resides in the Skyrim Town in Northeastern Port. I anticipate the temple will be a large number of monsters. You must locate Zelda as fast as possible. And he also tells you a current play you I'm. If you go for advice, you can do different things. There's rumors, hints, or summary. Uh, the hints are the ones I use, but I'll... To begin your search for Zelda, descend and to the service where you met a mysterious old woman of the Death Sea of all you and snow. Shortly thereafter, you made your way to Farron Woods and learned the key clues that Zelda entered a temper in the area. Ooh. Next, there's analysis. This one is probably the more important one that you could use. This is Skyview Temple. Analysis indicates the presence of monsters more powerful than those found in land. But where else go to next? Current such of items is survival plus. Suitability of current location is 85%, which is good. My predictions indicate the danger to your life will be limited if you remain calm and engage monsters kind. Use your health for punishing items sparingly. See, even she tells us we should not use our items unless we absolutely need them. Which is what I'm going to try and do and is also where my other things are going to come in play. So you want to know why I saved? Well, in the last videos that I played this game, I kind of struggled with some of the mobs. So if I had a fail on a mob early in this dungeon, or I guess a specific one, then I will immediately reset my game and do that fight again. Now, since I've already uh, played this game once, I do know how to face all the enemies down now, but back when I was learning the game, I would reset if something bad happened, because it is really important to make sure uh, things happen. And that is not where I wanted to go. Excuse me. Trying to hit this in thing. You're supposed to go up there and hit it normally with something else, but if you do that, you can just skip that whole part completely. It makes it a lot easier. From there, if we go here and talk to the statue, he who descended for the sky, lend your ear to the wise voice of the servant and brought you to the fill soil. It's likely uh, I'm the servant the tower is for thunder. To help you if your mission, the goddess gave me a last of calling and knowledge you on. Find yourself in need of answers. I hope you won't hesitate to call me and press us. If you turn it on and press L and then press it L, I'll tell you all the information you want to know about it. Which we can do like this. This agile sentry has a natural tendency to stare at the tip of pointed objects. Okay. So this one is that, as you saw there, that was basically sort of a Beemos. That's basically a puzzle that uh, has reference to multiple other games, even uh, Mario in the case of Beemos. But basically similar to that game, if you uh, walk up to and attack the enemies at the right spot, you can just uh, uh, do that, where you could just straight up skip them. And that's that. There's nothing much else to do there but yeah uh 
you basically have to send to defeat him, and that's that. It's pretty straightforward. This guy is similar to the other enemies, except he takes more hits to actually down. And also, we have to use our slingshot to get uh, more switches hit. And we'll also learn that we have to hit other switches in the area similar to that, but since we know what to do, it's not actually that bad. So first, we're going to head into this area, and I'll roll through this to get that out of the way, then head down here. The game wants us to kill that spider up top, but instead we're going to go down here, pull out the slingshot yet again, hit this switch, and doing so will completely change the area, causing the water level to suddenly increase. We need to do that twice, twice, and I mean twice, to move on to the next area. That's why I mentioned I don't have to necessarily kill that monster. Oh, and there's also an item there, but we can't actually get that later. And, uh, we can't even go by there, even if we wanted to, because no matter what, our swimming ability will do us up. So, we will, uh, skip this yet again. Because all we have to do now is just uh, raise the water level a second time, as the game indicates. And that's it. Now just like before, we do need to use the slingshot to hit the second crystal. Each of these crystals are hidden in different locations. One is hidden down below here, and another is hidden on top. If you want to make it a little bit easier, hitting the one on this side first is probably better, just simply because, well, to go down this way and then having to slowly swim through this is kind of slow. If you have the item for it, you could just skip that, but it is what it is. Alright. And yes, I do want to defeat the boss of this dungeon today. Now... When I say 100% of the items, this doesn't necessarily mean collecting all chests. We can skip them, in fact, if we want to, and we might end up skipping some. We only need the ones that have valuable treasures for 100%. See what I mean, by the way? I'm trying to press both of these down to do other attacks, and then it just does that instead. And again, we could skip these skull to us. We don't need to actually defeat them. Instead, we're gonna find... I believe there's another switch somewhere in this vicinity here. I... Oh, yeah, that's right. One is above and another is below. And it's right over there, too. Okay, well... I can't necessarily get to that in the same way as I defeated before, so this time we'll actually have to deal with this opponent, which is a Skulltula-like creature. First, we have to uh, cut its vines to knock him off. It's kind of interesting, actually. Uh, okay, yeah, I don't think I can just get to him like that. <laughs> I probably could actually snipe that for a second. Oh, yeah, that's right. So these enemies you can actually attack. I forgot. In a normal skill to a battle, we could just uh, spin him around to the side and then attack him on his back to defeat him. But because this is Skyward Sword and things do not pull on right, we can't really do that. So instead, we're going to do this, <laughs> which raises the water level yet again. Seems like there's a lot of this in this dungeon. Now that it's been raised twice, we can actually get the key that presides in the second area. Probably would have been better to do a second as a result. And then if we pierce that... Oh, for some reason that like knocked us back. That's not something I usually expect that to occur. Usually it uh, doesn't do that. That just shows all the strange things in this game. Sometimes I feel like you can easily get for the game without taking damage. 
There are times that just happens for no reason, and they're like, how did I even take damage there? Of course, I know what happened. He kind of uh, slapped backwards as I was trying to hit them. Well, you got a recovery art, so we're fine. The game has plenty of recovery art, so we'll be fine for the most part. All right. Now, if you do go to the end of the area, I'll say we need to hit two switches to get to the chest. One is above, one is below. And that's what we need to do, basically, to solve the puzzle and get to the locations of these two tests. This first one, the one you're intended to go to first, will give us the dungeon map and show locations of other chests in the Cinecy as well. You obtain the map of the area. Now, however, you will be unable to use beacons, and yeah, I kind of just skipped that, but basically the idea is the map, just like before, it gives us a way to go through the initial map. Um, if uh, you get a map in this game, you also get a compass, similar to what would normally happen in the older games after acquiring the compass, and with that, it shows you the locations of every single chest you have encountered in the area up to this point. This means you can check that whenever you want and just see that, oh, I missed a treasure here, or oh, I missed another treasure here. Which is really important because it helps you uh, get all the chests in an area much easier. My apologies, by the way, if I'm saving a lot, but it's mostly due to that reset thing that I already mentioned that I want to do that. Because, um... With this game, I want to save as many potions as I can, and especially shield power as well. If I, uh, I lost my shield kind of early in the first playthrough. Alright, so now we're going to actually see what to do with this. There's multiple different ways to defeat them, but intended ways to first use a Skyward Strike to spin them around. And then just try and pierce him twice, which we actually did perfect for once and not bad. And yeah, that allows you to kind of just take him out like that. Although we actually hit both of the two barriers, uh, unfortunately I don't remember. One is above, one is below. Yeah, I remember that part, but not the other part, necessarily. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's right, now I remember. There's so many things to remember in this game, and one thing I remember is this area is actually useless beyond just getting the gemstone. So I have to get the gemstone and then just leave. That's why I mentioned you don't necessarily have to fight that Skulltua, but I did just to show you how to beat them. Now, there is another one we'll have to beat later that is required. Oh, I- oh yeah, I see, I just realized what to do now. My slingshot owl is running very low. I'm gonna try a risky strategy to ensure I have enough slingshot ammo to actually do this. Normally, I don't lose this much slingshot ammo this quickly, but... Because I'm going for more of a fast speed run and also a lot of the mesh socks before just made this really bad, so if I would normally kill those spiders, I'm not going to this time. For fast, we can just barely escape them anyway. We can even shake them off anyway, so they're not actually that bad. You can even slice them up the shrine. Oh, we can uh, get an item there um, one of them, but it fell down below the surface, unfortunately, so I can't really get that. Wait, so if I uh, defeat them, does that mean I can get items? Let's try that. And yes, you can also defeat them with a Skyward Strike too. There's lots of ways to defeat enemies in this game. Skyward Strike is probably one of the most overpowered ways to do it since... It has range and a good hitbox, which means you can hit enemies from very far away, even if it seems like you would normally not be able to. Okay, now this next one, unfortunately, does have an enemy you are required to defeat. Yeah, that's right. This one is the one we have to kill. Like, not, is it, not only is it in an annoying spot, but it's in the way where we have to do another eye puzzle anyway, so 
We have to first do what we did before and spin it around. And then pierce the ground twice to kill him. Whoop. Oh, I had to use my sword to fit that. Okay, now we have to go in the middle between these two. Oh, jeez, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, come on. The most awkward part is, uh, of this is you can do it pretty quickly, but if you move too fast, you'll just slain your shot as if doing a motion instead of spinning the eyes around, which is what you want. And yes, it's a reference to another series of enemies we had to take out in a different game, known as Mario 64, which we did play on the channel through the new Switch version collection. By the way, those games were some of the toughest games to 100%. Definitely not easy. Though I feel proud that I could say that I've at least 100% Super Mario Sunshine. My gosh, that was like the hardest game ever. And I feel like I did not struggle as much on this one other area known as the Kling Chinko Machine as much as I fought. In fact, I struggled more on an individual level than I did on everything else. Definitely, uh, I use a lot of lives. If you don't know what you're doing, it could be really bad. Before we do anything else, we are going to go to this area in the right corner, which is locked. And we're gonna just save right here. This one is much more important, as there will be going into a boss fight. Where we're gonna take this guy out is just, um, expect him to attack, then block his attack. And if we block his attack perfectly, we can just leave himself vulnerable, he'll leave himself vulnerable and then we can uh, kind of do stuff. Okay, we just barely have enough slingshot ammo to make this work. Normally I wouldn't be saying this, but we're actually out of slingshot ammo. Normally we get a lot more than that, but it is what it is. Enter this room, bam. We are trapped in the room with Yes, this is a stealth pulse, and I believe we've faced these fiends before. Oh, nice, we got him. Ah, oh, darn it, missed him that time, but we got some good hits in. See, I told you it wasn't that bad. If you have a good shield, which I did, definitely. You can just use block chains to defeat him, and it's that easy. And there's even hearts if you need it, so it's not actually that bad of a fight with the shield. If you have no shield, now you're getting somewhere, and now it's actually difficult. In case you're wondering, the intent way to defeat him without shield is just hit in the direction he's not blocking, similar to the Bacoblins, except he blocks much more directions. Analysis of this object's inset, profile, and wings indicate it confined. After launching it, it can remotely pilot the device. The sharp structure on the, of the device can sever threads and deliver a blow to smaller objects. Press zitter to ready the device for takeoff, then just to learn more about its operation. Now, we are trapped in a room, so in order to get out, we have to use this, which is known as the beetle. To hit literally the same gemstone that was there before, which mysteriously activated again for some reason. And hitting that will allow us to actually uh, go out of the room. And now we are no longer worried. And yes, I did die to that guy. It was not fun. With the shield, it's not actually that bad. But definitely makes proof that this game is not easy by any means. Now, if we cut both of these loose, then we can get, uh, items from them. Now, as for the actual requirement, we have to go all the way to the top here. It's kind of scarce. The beetle just barely meets it. But we can bock it to a switch all the way at the top of there, and you would think it would open up the way forward. It does not. Instead, it opens up... That secret passage which you saw there, which leads to another one of those fabled pieces of heart. We need all of them to 
beat the game 100%. And there's kind of a piece in my face. Yeah, that's what those bats are called, piece. The most annoying enemy in the game. Not hard, but not really easy to deal with either. They're just super annoying. That's all. I believe we do have to use the beetle here again, so we'll go ahead and do this. Our gem needed to be activated, sure enough. Part of that I do remember because, like, well, if there's a no way to get stuff, that means there's probably a gem there. And I believe I am going the correct way because I do believe we need a key to go on to the next zone, so it's important that we got that. Don't you just like how fast this game is? Without text, this game definitely feels quicker than its original counterpart, that's for sure. Okay. Can't I just, uh, oh wait, I can pick this up with the beetle, right? Now, if the item's out of reach and you had the beetle, you could just pick it up with it. Just run into it. That will count as a pickup. Well, even... May as well hit the switch while we're here, too, just to save ourselves some stress. This, uh... Makes a passageway flood for later, which we need to get up top. Now we get our item on with that. Now we can actually go into this chamber, which has another trap, but it's not as bad. It's actually just a spider but this time you have to block its attack or I guess parse it or something I forget this one's kind of odd now if you press plus with I uh, we can like uh, uh, enemy. The giant ceases a sight and has the deep areas for us. It attacks with highly obese value I pray to say. Tip our kids, but stomach may be volunteer. I'm currently Kadati and Little Dallas. I got him trying to block him and yet it's not doing anything. Wait a minute, can I just escape up here? Yeah, I can. Alright. What's this even have? Oh, well, that's required for the level anyway. Oh, oh, uh, oh, okay, that was the wrong area. This is the part where I have to go down. Ooh, okay, that was useful. We need, we definitely, definitely needed those hearts. Could have come at a better time. Oh, wait, yeah, I remember now. Oh, there we go. That's right, we have to hit him once. I find it odd because when I... When 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 my... Uh, when I saw a spear on face to the enemy, he kind of just knocked it on his back right away and then kind of just slapped him off and that was it, but... I remember, yeah, that's right. We have to hit him multiple times. He reveals his back, and then we do that. That's the one version of Skull 2 I don't know how to actually take out. Again, I this is only my second playthrough, so don't be surprised if I forget things. But I definitely knew it wasn't a shield bass, considering shield basses didn't seem to work. Also, I feel really nice that uh, the Skull Tua was that easy to take out. Okay, good. We can do this again. Okay, that was much quicker than the second one that we did. Just like before, I had to take out all the eyes, except this time we also had to put a box down to actually get all of them so that we can kill them all because we don't get anything done if we only get one. We have to get them all at the same time, which is a bit obnoxious. And yes, if we do try and go back into the same room as we were before, we'll find out that that room is flooded. It, um, the way we uh, used is no longer open to us. 
Now, there is another enemy we have to normally debate here, but this one we can skip, thankfully. Get rid of that, and then we can move down here to get out. I find it funny that a Skull Tula gave me more problems than a Stalfels, which is supposed to be a mini-boss and very scary and tough, and yet I took him out immediately, and then I strolled against that guy. It's just so awkward to figure out. Oh, uh, well, let's make sure this guy dies. See, look, that, that time I was able to do a fatal blow, like, almost immediately. Okay, we need another one of these, uh, stupid, uh, ale puzzles to get yet another, uh, item. Ooh. Okay, that. Oh, and we have this piece trying to get in the way. We'll have to kill him first, and then do it. Again, any switch with an item set up just further begs to believe that there's probably a switch in one of these passages. We just have to find it. Beyond a couple of other things, I don't actually know where the other switches are. Okay, that was honestly really dumb. I need to move a little bit differently. Oh wow, we didn't find the switch, but we found loopies. I guess that's not terrible. We can uh, pick these up and cancel it to get them back to us. Oh wait, no, we can uh, go in there from the hour way. That's right. I forgot there's a key here. Oh, and by the way, here's another way to take out these guys. We can't actually defeat them normally, but if we just run the beetle into their faces, the plants will immediately die, and that's really important because unless you have a fast movement and a good movement over this beam, you'll never actually be able to get across this beam in a normal circumstance. In fact, you're normally intended to defeat them all before you head out. You can use a Skyward Strike again, but it's much easier to just use the Beetle and cut their uh, strain with the claws and that just instantly kills them. It makes it a lot less stressful. Again, using the balance function just to make sure I uh, recent the controls. A big problem with the game is the button the uh, button that you use to reset to the controls can't be used during certain scenarios like that as well. Oh, we have a new enemy. Okay, this one. You're supposed to kill all three heads at the same time, and it's supposed to be in our puzzle. Again, in our quick block with our shield and a puzzle, though, we can immediately defeat it. Uh, makes it a lot easier. I like how I was really scared about a boss fight, and then I kind of just destroyed that boss in, like, no time. Okay, this one is quite interesting. Ah, missed it. You have to move him out of the way using that, but... Oh, actually, wait a minute. I have a better idea. That is a strategy you can do, and it does work, but... Just like all the other enemies, use the beetle to cut the strain. That's probably actually easier, but the strategy I was doing there does actually work, and it's actually kind of an ingenious strategy. That's a speedrun that the speedrunners of the game use, where you basically try and beat the game as quickly as possible. It's quite a cool strategy, I will admit. Definitely not a normal strategy. But it is pretty uh, tight. You have to be very quick with that to actually make it work. And we'll go ahead and pick this up and then use the beetle to trigger more ropes, which we need. I don't remember if it stuns himself after one. Oh, it does. Oh, wow. So I'm going to have to use it twice here. That's a bit annoying. Pretty soon we will be able to speed this up, but for now, uh, we can't really do a lot. Now, I believe this is the guy I mentioned where he can. He's just at a uh, 
So if we just move through, he will try to do the same balancing as he does before. Oh. But if you shake him around a lot, you could just make him fall off for some strange reason. It's kind of weird, actually. Oh wow, he called a buddy behind me. That's something I never really know about. Okay, never mind. So you can still do it, it's just that in the original game you kind of can just knock him off. In this game you actually have to move the remote a little bit. But yeah, as you saw there, that's why I call him the idiot, because you can just knock him off into his death, and he never comes after you after that. Okay, there's two chests in here. One at the top right here, actually, which we can pick up. This gives us a narrow red boopy. Now at 225, we are definitely overstocked on rupees this time. <laughs> Which will be enough to buy something at Beal Sop, as well as a couple of our items, but we'll probably have to pick that up later. And we have another rope we have to cut down. I have tried making the mistake of jumping off the rope before cutting it, and that's not the best. Another one of those. I got a guy that we just defeated that literally fell off the ground, kind of just came back. Because he all of a sudden, that's strange. And yes, I made it in the original version. You don't go anywhere near him and he kind of just falls off. It's kind of weird. So when you actually have to move him around a little bit to make him uh, do that. And yeah, if I feels kind of scary that that is required. Yeah. And yes, for some reason, falling does not damage you. In other games, uh, Skyward Sword, well, not Skyward Sword HD, Skyward Sword SD, well, I guess mainly the other games, particularly Ocarina of Time, everybody remembers that falling actually damages you. This game, not so much. Instead, you kind of just end back here. I guess the one thing that is cool is Link kind of does a really funny animation as he falls. This is not the best we need to because this isn't going right we need to move down the rope first to get enough radius to actually get to the thing we are trying to get okay good there we go we made it that time there's our golden carving which is Essentially, our our uh, boss key now. It's quite interesting, actually, but definitely good nonetheless. I think he literally just came back to say hi. That's how annoying that is. I don't know why he kind of just ran away from that. Oh, see, this is the one I meant. He kind of just goes off on his own, trying to go towards you. You could always just hit him with the beetle, though, but... In the original lane, if you move the rope even a little bit, he would just fall off. Oh, I just realized. That movement is what actually knocks them off, so you do have to do it manually a little bit. Okay, we're gonna save our game. For the boss fight, though, since we have full potions for that fight, it shouldn't be that bad. We have two recovery items along with sand. There's also health in the area, so we should be more than fine. So yeah, you kind of have to solve a puzzle to make the door open. If you look at the shape, though, it's not actually that bad, but... Yeah, instead of just inserting a boss key and going into the door like you saw other games, like the other Zelda games we've played, basically, 
we have to uh, solve a puzzle and insert it properly in order to actually uh, get to the right spot. Our first boss, yep, he's back. Already, right off the bat, our first boss is now then the Demon Lord, Giriam. He's back. This is actually where he came from. Look who it is. Look who it is, indeed. I thought that tornado I stirred up would have tossed you and torn you apart, yet here you are, not in pieces. Not that your life or death has any consequence. It's just a girl that matters now, and I can sense her here, just beyond this door. So we plucked her majesty from her perch in the clouds, and now she's ours. But listen to me, I'm being positively uncivil. Allow me to introduce myself. Dear Lord, besides over this land you look upon, this world on the surface, you may call me Giriam. In truth, I very much prefer to be indulged with our full title, though Giriam, but I'm not fussy. And yes, this guy we fought many times in Iowa Warriors. He's actually this game's main villain. Did you really just draw your sword? Foolish boy. By all rights, the girl should have fallen into our hands already. She was nearly ours when a low subservient of the goddess satched her away. Do you have any idea how this made me feel inside? Furious. Outraged. Sick with anger. This turn of events has left me with a strong appetite for bloodshed. <laughs> Still, it hardly seems fair being in my position to take all my anger out of you, which is why I promise not to murder you. No, I'll just beat you within an inch of your life. <laughs> Oh, oh, boy. Here we go. So, uh, this guy is not really the easiest. If you try and attack him with anything, he'll just, uh, block all of your attacks. So, he'll basically hold out his hand to one of the sides. If you slash on the opposite, then he won't be able to grab you. If he does, like, what just happened there, you can just attack it back. Oh, wow, that was quick. I did not switch that right. But yeah, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. The side he's trying to aim for, you basically have to slash away from that. Oh, I didn't know he did that, by the way. He normally never does that. Okay, I'm gonna actually... Because that uh, was bad, let's uh, quickly hold out... What? No, not that. Use R to pull out the pouch. Use this. That restores our shield. Alright, now let's actually fight him again. And yes, he can grab your sword. I like how we got multiple hits on him at the beginning, and now we just can't seem to be getting any. I think the way you're supposed to do it is move him to the right and then hit him. Because that, he usually wants to go more towards the right, but if you hit him on the other side, he won't do that. After a couple of hits, he'll give up though, and eventually draw a sword of his own, which he just did. Now we just have to slash it a direction he's not blocking. That was quick. Oh, 
You can block him, but it's kind of tough. Which we just did. Okay, there we go. That was much better. He likes to dodge a lot, so you pretty much have to force him into doing this block attack, which you can then counter. is definitely a lot easier because like the fights before that is not not nice oh and yes he can charge you while you're waiting so it's not easy and yes I did try and move far away but I moved a little too close Okay, we are almost set. He was almost dead, too. If only we had done a few more attacks. Well, you put up more in a fight than I would have fought, possibly, out of a such tough boy. But don't crap yourself quite yet. That sword of yours is the only reason you still live. I fear I spent far too odd teasing and toying with you. That girl's presence is all but fade for the space, which means there's no reason to anger you. Goodbye, scale child. Play this time. Get in my way again, no, and you're dead. <laughs> now, just so you know, this is actually a lot worse of a fight than the Style Fulfs, because, little hint, it actually has a source of RNG. What moves he does and when he does them is completely random, which means you can get different fights if you don't know what to do. Ideally, you want him to just dash and then you block it and then you can usually take him out pretty quickly, but what he does us, is completely random. The first phase is always the same. He will always move towards your hand and will never actually attack you, so that phase is the same almost every time once you know what to do. Which, using spins is much easier to deal with than just doing other attacks. But, anyways, we made it after who knows how long. We are now in uh, the first actual big area of the game, having finished the first dungeon. I did say I would try and conquer the first dungeon, and we did. So, once you get out of the intro area, it's not quite as bad now before we actually do the thing that we're supposed to mention which is like charging another skyward strike we're instead going to hit these to get some seeds like the game mentioned and yeah there's kind of a goddess cube right here this one is kind of sneaky if you do not know this is here you can kind of just hit the other thing instead and then you'll just leave Skyview Temple early which is not fun we also have fairies here but again we can't get them until we get our for mentioned bug met if you remember uh, our games the only reason I'm chopping these is to get some nuts which now we have a decent amount so we're gonna raise our sword skyward that is not what I wanted to do Sometimes I feel like I don't swing my secondary remote at all, and then it just does that anyways. Now, if you hear any pain, my apologies. I kind of went too far close again, even though I try my best to pull high. Sometimes I do move my chair a little forward, so if I do get hit. Master, I have a message written in the language of the old gods. Allow me to translate for you. On the edge of time, I guide you, the one chosen to carry out the goddess's mission. The spirit maiden who descended from the clouds must travel to two sacred places to purify her body. You stand in one of these places, Skyview Spring. The other is known as the Earth Spring. 
The second sprain is hidden deep away in the scorched earth of Elden. The spirit may have a mindful of this heavy task entrusted to her, sent out for the second sacred place. Yeah, the Ruby Tower. The Reverend Sosa feels really old. Again. Same thing. Okay, we are done with this dungeon. Masters, I just translated it would appear that Zelda purified herself in the water of these saints. I calculated a 90% chance she's already set out for Elden, where in our great spring is this. It's not clear what method Zelda. Avils use Zelda used to move from here to her next destination. That would suggest that you should take the tablet to the altar in the skylock. Doing so will likely open a new column of light on the surface, allow you to send Aria and continue your search for Zelda. The bird that transports you to the sky of Parvis adds you back to the sky should be in the forest you previously passed through. And see, this is what I mean by we're gonna warp out. See? Told ya! Hey, it's me! Did you find the girl? Not yet. That's oh, too bad, but it sounds like you at least know oh, where you need to find her. That's something, right? I'm so glad I finally been united with all my Keekly fence. It's all thanks to you. If any luck, hopefully you'll find that girl you've been searching for real soon. Take care, okay? Yep. I will try my best. Alright, now we can finally return to the sky and actually go to the second part of this properly. So, to the sky! And we're gonna go to sky off first because there's lots of stuff we have to pick up. Including a new quest, but we won't actually show off that until later. So the reason why I did this so fast, like the first dungeon so fast, is for one exclusive reason. You don't get to do anything until later. When you hit that guy's cube of Sky Strike early, I was able to detect the resulting energy reaction above the clouds. Make sure I've marked on your map indicates the spot where I sensed an energy reaction. I advise you to investigate the area around this location. Ooh, okay. So Basically, whenever you hit a goddess cube, it spawns a chest or activates a chest in an individual area, which is around the actual big sky area itself. And if we um, activate that, then we get an extra chest. They have various rewards, including rupees, money, and a couple of other items. But the most important thing they have of all is some of them have pieces of heart and medals. We need medals to finish this game, so yeah, that is an important thing we need to make sure we get. I am not anywhere close to this. I'm just gonna use the slingshot to hit this. It's probably the faster way of hitting it anyway. So yeah, for some reason, Beetle is bad. Now, Beetle's been in a lot of games, including new... Earning the still newest Zelda title known as Zelda Breath of the Wild. But, um, this same shop for some reason is flying, so you have to go all the way up here each time you want to talk to him. And here he is in his big shop. No! You come all this way, it's so rare to have a customer in here. Beale's Air Shop has everything you can ever want. Please take a look around. And if you actually buy something, that would be even better, which we are going to one thing here. Oh. It's about that. Yale for catching bugs, insect soup. Aren't many bugs here, but you'll be able to catch tons of this when there are some. And only at 50 rupees, I'll be sure to... There you'll make enough profit. That is the first time we're going to buy, by the way. Hunting bugs, remember to approach quietly and strike quickly. Alright. Thank, Thank you ever so much. You've given me a strength to keep failing. Alright. So that's how we actually uh, catch stuff, and that's really important. Now, there's a couple of other things we're gonna get. We didn't lose our heart potion, nor did we lose our other thing. But there is something else we need. 
if we go to the bazaar and go here, we can buy a secondary tier shield called the Iron Shield. This watch for Durl and the Water Shield are happy to report it won't burst their flames. I should warn you, it won't protect from electricity, which would come as a natural you saw. It's yours for just 900 rupees, which we have. <laughs> if you have doubts about the Durl you shield, I suggest you have it examined at the lab shop. I you take good gone there, the necessary treasures you like, and you'll happily upgrade your items. Items. My goodness, I cannot speak today. Now, uh, this, that upgrading mechanic that you just saw, that is where a lot of the stuff actually comes into handy. But before I leave, I should probably show you how this mysterious bugnet thing works, or whatever it is. Not here, apparently, but uh, I guess somewhere else. Oh, yeah, here. If you uh, move your net up to a bug and hit it before it flies away, you can. So, the uh, kit. So, yeah. You would basically just use this like this when you approach a bug and you can catch it. Just like so. There are multiple bugs throughout this game. However... We can't really get much here, so that mind, um, I think I'm done. So, uh, we just finished off a bunch of dungeons, and I feel like it's time to call it quits. If you like it, I enjoyed Caught Rate to Skype, and I'll see you in the next video where we do some side stuff. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video for Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD version. Until then, bye. Thank <laughs> you.